My name is Jeff Coons. I'm the Associate Director of the Full-Time MBA Program here at Smith School of Business at Queens. Uh, I've been with the program now for almost 10 years, hard to believe, uh, the anniversary coming up in January. Um, we are at the 11th month of the 12-month journey. Our current students are winding down their MBA year, finishing up their elective courses, working on their individual project, going to job interviews and securing offers. Um, so it's great to be a part of that journey with them as they move forward with uh, their MBA and what comes next after the MBA. And it's an honor to be uh, a small part of that uh, success story that they're writing as they move through a very busy year. So I live and work in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, uh, a wonderful place to live and work, as I've indicated uh, at the, the opening moments of this presentation. Um, I've also had the pleasure of working in the building in the middle of that slide, Kingston City Hall. Um, we are located uh, right in the heart of Eastern Ontario. If you look at the map of Canada, Kingston, Ontario is located right at the northeastern point of Lake Ontario, right along the St. Lawrence River 401 corridor. Um, we're just uh, about two and, a, two and a bit hours east of Toronto, about three hours west of Montreal, about two hours south of Ottawa, and about a 45-minute drive from the nearest United States border crossing. So we're not too close or too far to anything, but uh, it feels very much a part of the fabric of Eastern Ontario. And when I think of Kingston and I think of Queens, you think of one, you think of the other. I can't say that any two cities and schools are closely aligned as Queens and, and uh, Kingston are. There's a picture of me in the bottom left-hand corner with a group of alumni on graduation day, and it certainly uh, becomes your home away from home quite quickly as you, as you go through your MBA student journey. There is the Queens University campus from high above. Uh, you can see all of the, the beautiful historic spaces and modern spaces that have been added uh, over the decades, over the generations. That big yellow arrow is the Goods Hall location on the Queen's University campus. Uh, you'll note it there uh, on the middle left of the slide. Uh, that piece of water that you see in the top of the slide is the Cataraqui River. Uh, just off screen to the right would be the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario. So we are quite close to a waterfront location where you can take your books and studies and and, and have uh, team meetings down at the waterfront uh, and a short walk to our historic downtown location, our city hall and our, our beautiful pedestrian friendly city location. Lots of great opportunities for you to, to work and study and engage within the vibrant Kingston community. It's about a 10, 15 minute walk from the Queen's University campus to our downtown. Most of our students live within that 10, 15 minute walk, uh, the radius of campus. So again, Queen's University is very much a, a student feel and Kingston, Ontario is very much a university town. And you'll feel that, that pride and sense of ownership quite quickly when you join us here in the new year. For our international students that are listening from uh, all four corners of the globe, um, studying in Canada is highly desirable. It, you can receive world-class business education at a top school like Queen's. Uh, we have thriving industries within banking and energy and mining sectors. We are growth, we're showing growth in, in tech and entrepreneurship. Um, our alumni have shared with us that there is an easy path to post-graduation employment opportunities. We are the best in Canada at career services, and certainly we want to help you move towards a, a post-MBA career in your desired field. Uh, many international students prefer to remain in Canada after the program with a desired uh, pathway to residency and immigration. And uh, I, I, I feel very confident in saying that Canada is a stable, peaceful, and welcoming society to um, international students who wish to become a part of the Canadian fabric. Earlier this year, uh, the full-time MBA program did quite well in the prestigious global MBA rankings in the Financial Times uh, listing. 
Uh, number one in Canada for three main categories. Number one in ov overall satisfaction for the student experience. That's certainly near and dear to my heart. Uh, that's what I do for a living, working with our staff and students on the MBA experience that they have here on campus at Goods Hall. So being number one in Canada is certainly meaningful to me. Uh, 9.1 out of 10, so impressive. Um, about one point ahead of any close competitor within the domestic marketplace. Uh, well, that tells me that our students are having a tremendous experience and quick to tell the world about that through this ranking. We are number one for value for money or return on investment. I acknowledge that undertaking an MBA in any program is a significant undertaking of time, energy, and money. It's a, probably the second largest investment you'll make in your lifetime, uh, apart from buying a home. So being number one in ROI helps you be assured that you're maximizing the opportunity costs of undertaking an MBA here at Smith at Queens. And finally, number one for career services, number 25 in the world. So amazing. Uh, I would put our career services plan up against any in the domestic marketplace. Uh, depending on the year, our graduates secure employment within three months of graduation, often sooner anywhere between 95 to 98% of our cohort every year. So again, that tells me that the marketplace is recognizing that the quality of students that come out of our program are uh, able to move into those post-MBA careers quickly. At the bottom of the screen, you can see that we were number 71 in the world in that FT ranking, tied with Notre Dame University. Um, the tied again for the second highest year-over-year -year jump uh, from one year to the next. So we're really excited about that. You can see from the slide as well that we are accredited for a number of global uh, accreditation entities. So if adding that accreditation to your profile is important to you, we certainly check those boxes as well. So a question I often get is how is the full-time MBA experience at Smith delivered? We take a holistic approach. We take a, a modern methodology towards business school delivery. You know, I get questions, you know, are we case-based? Are we classroom-based? How does it work? This slide hopefully brings it home for you. Uh, a number of different ways for us to deliver that. The MBA classroom is about 15 feet in that direction, just off screen from my office. Um, yes, we do have traditional classroom instruction and discussion in that classroom. The students are very much a part of the daily fabric of the MBA experience here at Goods Hall. And um, our office is open eight to five, Monday to Friday. So we have continuous interaction with our students and our faculty in the classroom and in the adjacent office. Of course, we do have living case studies as well. The cases are used throughout the MBA experience in both our, our core subjects and our elective courses. You will have plenty of exposure to case content in the MBA experience here at Smith as well as auxiliary training in our distinctly case format to help you prepare for post-MBA careers that do take uh, a case-based approach to uh, interacting with the companies that you'll be working with uh, as a post-MBA professional. Going, kind of going up the list in reverse here, simulations. Uh, this is actually allowing you to uh, take a concept, a process within a specific core subject in the MBA program and simulating that. The negotiations course comes uh, comes to mind. Uh, you'll read a case, you'll be playing a role and working with another student or a small group of students on um, a specific role within that case and simulating an outcome uh, through the learnings that you take in class. Real world business projects, again, applying what you're learning in class you're actually taking that, working with a client on a problem, challenge, or opportunity that they're facing, uh, working as an individual or as a part of a team towards uh, an effective outcome. Again, using the skills that can make you uh, the, the professional that you're trying to become to apply those skills in real world situations. Experiential learning is critical. Learning by doing. It's not as easy as you know regurgitating facts, reading a textbook. Um, attending a lecture and, and gaining that knowledge from the impressive women and men at the front of the room. 
it's actually valuable to take that and experience the learning uh, through a real format that you yet you create along with the staff and advisors and coaches that you have in the MBA experience. So a number of different ways to get the MBA content here at Smith School of Business that brings the technical expertise and those interpersonal skills together. I, I believe that Smith is known broadly nationally as the team-based MBA. It's certainly something that's closely associated with our brand. That photo that you see there is a recent MBA team. And as you can see from their, their faces, uh, very diverse teams, culturally, academically, professionally, across gender lines. Uh, the person in the team room opposite you is nothing like you in a lot of different ways. And we do that deliberately so that you're each learning from those experiences and learning from each other as you move forward as an academic and as a young professional. And why do we do it that way? Because it mirrors the, today's progressive workplace. When you go to that post-MBA job, you're going to have to work effectively with people that aren't like you. Uh, you're going to have to work with the accountant or the engineer or the finance person um, or the lawyer or someone that has a background completely different from yours. Um, so again, the training and experiences that you get in the team-based learning format here at Smith are going to help you to excel in those organizations across multiple industries. And it truly helps you develop those team and leadership skills. At the beginning of this webinar, when I mentioned that we're in the 11th month of the 12-month journey, I have conversations on a regular basis with students in my office, and they often say that the team-based learning is a transformative experience for them and helps them understand who they are, their strengths, and also areas that they need to improve upon as they move forward into what comes next. And again, the uh, academia that you earn, the work experience that you earn is a, a critical variable, but your ability to work with others, to problem solve, to be culturally sensitive, to be empathetic, and to be resilient uh, are critically a part of that as well. So all of that comes together nicely through the team-based learning approach. How do we measure uh, the ideal MBA candidate? I get this question a lot and uh, I'm, I'm always happy to get it. So this is a bit of the secret sauce of how we assess uh, an applicant moving forward. Intellectual horsepower, work ethic and resiliency, coachability and team experience, EQ, interpersonal skills, or so-called soft skills. And I'll talk very briefly about each category. Intellectual horsepower, I, I'm pretty sure any program out there will assess you through your previous academic experience, through your, your, grad, your grades, your GPA, your GMAT score, or your GRE. Um, you know, what program did you undertake? What school did you get it at? Uh, did you win any awards? Uh, that's a pretty standard process. Uh, any program will ask you that. Second, work experience and specifically your work ethic and resiliency. Uh, where have you worked since your undergrad? What type of company? What type of roles? Um, have you had some progression there? Have you um, been promoted within that role during that time? Uh, what do your references say about you? Are you client facing? Are you working on major projects? Um, these are all ways that you can distinguish yourself as a, a rising strength, a rising star within your organization. And, and what does that say about you and your ability to transition to your desired post-MBA career? Coachability and team experience. Of course, coachability is critical in life in general, but certainly in a team-based environment because we have four different types of coaches available to you. A team coach, a career coach is going to work closely with you on your post-MBA career plans from beginning to end. An executive coach, someone that you can call upon for additional guidance and support as you consider transitioning from student life to post-MBA careers. And something we call fit to lead, which is critical to help level that balance that we're trying to achieve as people in and out of the classroom, in and out of, in and out of the work environment. Um, things like physical fitness, health and wellness, mental health practices, proper nutrition, those little ingredients that can help us become better people. Fit to lead is a, a very important, optional, but highly recommended part of your MBA journey. And the students that get involved in fit to lead activities 
are, are very much uh, in love with it and, and enjoy promoting that. And uh, of course, team experience that you've had previously. Um, we've got Olympic athletes in our program. Um, perhaps you've enjoyed things like sports, music, theater, community service in your personal life. If you enjoy those types of opportunities, that collaborative nature, as, as you will, um, you're going to enjoy the team-based experience. If you're more of a lone wolf and you prefer to work remotely or, or on your own, um, you might struggle with uh, a team-based environment. And again, that's something to keep in mind as you move forward with a potential uh, application. Finally, emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills, so-called soft skills, which are difficult to measure, but you certainly know it when you see it. Um, we're looking for things like effective communication skills, general professionalism, uh, the ability to uh, work effectively in a, a culturally and, and uh, modern workplace, uh, accepting the ideas of others, um, effective listening skills, leadership skills, appropriate sense of humor. Again, you can't be the stiff zombie and you can't be the lovable fool. Uh, you have to be able to show effectiveness, strength, and competence in each of these four categories. And if you can demonstrate that through your application, through your interview, and your interactions with our staff, you're probably going to get into the program, you're probably going to do well in the program, and you're probably going to get a great job after the program because we built this model based on what global employers are looking for in post-MBA hires. They want smart people. They want people with a good start to their post-undergrad work experience with a trajectory going upward. They want team players. They want people that can be coached and be coached. They not make the same mistake twice. And they just want good people that are ready to work in the modern workplace environment. Um, so that's why we built this form point model to consider applicants for our program. As I mentioned, uh, number one in Canada for return on investment, the class of 22 is at 96% of an offer before graduation. Um, there's the average total compensation and top salary. The class of 2023, the report is done. It will be on the uh, full-time MBA website very soon. So keep an eye on that and bookmark that to understand a little bit more about uh, last year's class and how well they're doing, uh, I'm very confident that, again, they're in that 96-97% range uh, for receiving uh, a job offer. And something I wanted to note specifically about employment reports, there are plenty of programs in the marketplace that do not have 100% of their students reporting into that report for some reason. And I would I would challenge you to ask those schools, those recruiting departments in those MBA programs, why the students are not 100% reporting into their employment report. There's something they're hiding from you. So I encourage you to be uh, astute in your research when you move forward with that. We are proud to report that 100% of our students, regardless of outcome, contribute to the employment report every year. Where do our alumni end up? Of course, uh, the large majority of our students uh, prefer to live and work in Canada for some of the reasons I mentioned in the earlier slide, the career opportunities and the quality of life that we offer here in Canada. Um, the Toronto area, the GTA, for those of you from the area know what that acronym means. That means general, uh, greater Toronto area, sorry. Uh, so almost three quarters of the alumni will end up in the hub for commerce in Canada, the Toronto area. However, if you're more of a West Coaster or East Coaster, Vancouver, Calgary, Montreal, Ottawa, Kingston, Halifax also have uh, a number of, uh, of students that will move there and work there after the MBA program. Um, a handful of students will go to the US, uh, other parts of the world, Latin America, uh, Asia, if they prefer to return to their country of origin, they can certainly do so. Um, I worked with a student recently who was from Costa Rica. His uh, full intention was to return to Costa Rica after the program and uh, start a business there, and he did so. Um, that was his goal, and, and off he went. My, what I want to say as well to end this slide is, if you can dream it, you can do it. 
uh, work with your career coach on a plan that's specific to you as to where you'd like to work, not only the company, but the country of origin of that company. So we do have an all-inclusive program fee for the next class undertaking here in January, 2024. Hard to believe it's about two months away from the next class. We do have uh, a few spots still available in that cohort starting in January, 2024. Domestic fees are 83, 795, international fees just over 105. That is an all-inclusive fee. And we do not have an application fee as a part of our process. Uh, one of very few programs that do not have that. Uh, we do not take a dollar from you until you enroll in our program experience. So that's something to keep in mind. This includes your tuition. All of your books and cases are delivered right to your team room or picked up here in the office. Uh, all of your exclusive MBA resources, your coaching, uh, your career center activity is all included. If you go on any case competitions during the MBA year, you can uh, do so and receive a travel stipend for that. We go to Toronto a lot during the MBA year for one day trips and a week long trek. Um, it's a great way for you to engage with corporate partners and alumni in that hub for commerce in Canada at our beautiful downtown Toronto facility. Um, so again, all of that is included in those fees. The only thing that isn't included is, of course, your cost of living. Um, your rent, your groceries, um, your day-to-day -day expenses uh, as a student. And this slide is a good estimate as to what you might experience as a future MBA student. Um, again, everyone is slightly different. Everyone has a slightly different budget. But as you can see from this slide, um, a pretty good indicator as to what you might pay out of pocket for things like rent and groceries, utilities such as having a phone and internet access at your home. Uh, we also provide great support for future students. We have a great relationship with local landlords. So if you need help securing a, an apartment, we have a Slack channel set up that will help you secure uh, an appropriate accommodation for you and your partner. If you'd like to live alone, if you'd like to live as a part of a small group, we can help you make those selections. Financing is available for applicants to the program. All of our students are considered for merit-based scholarships. We do have uh, merit and donor scholarships still available. We have Forte Foundation fellowships available for uh, female students. We have a partnership with the, um, the Ramba scholarship format for those who identify with the LGBTQ2S+. We have scholarships available for uh, students with visible and invisible disabilities, and we have scholarships available for students who identify as Black or Indigenous, so we're happy to work with applicants who identify within each of those categories. Um, for domestic students, the Royal Bank of Canada has a student line of credit that can assist with your student fees top-up, and uh, for those international students that are listening, uh, Empower Financing does offer uh, support for you as you top up your personal savings and a possible scholarship. So how do uh, we help you from here? Uh, Terry Lynn Leger and Rachel Green are the best at what they do. They are our application advisor specifically for the MBA program here at Smith. Um, they are experts on the full-time MBA experience and they are on your side. They will help you provide a preliminary assessment of what they see on your profile and they will coach you and move you through every step of the way, the process that is right for you. They might push you a little harder this time of year, given that it's November 14th and we're moving towards our, our mid-January start date. Uh, they are on your side and will help you present a strong case to the admissions committee. The admissions committee does meet on a regular basis about every 10 days this time of year. So uh, needless to say, you won't have to wait a long time to get feedback on your application once it's completed. And the bullet points on the left-hand side of the screen are how we assess our candidates. So submit a cover letter and resume to Terry Lynn or Rachel, and they will, will help you clean up some loose ends, things they might wanna see there, and things you might wanna enhance uh, to put your best foot forward. Uh, your official transcripts from your undergraduate degree uh, can be sent directly to us from that university. We will be looking at work experience as a part of your profile 
two years as the minimum, four to five is our annual average with about eight or nine as a soft ceiling. Um, work experience is critical as you bring um, key variables of yourself to those engagements in the classroom and in the team room. And of course, your knowledge from unique backgrounds will help enhance that team experience as well. Uh, we will be requiring references. In a perfect world, we'd love to hear from your boss, someone that can speak to your effectiveness on the job as a young professional and your journey uh, as a leader within that organization. Uh, we'd also like to hear from uh, someone else you work with on a regular basis, perhaps a client uh, or someone that you work with on a not-for-profit project in the community. Um, the link is sent directly to them. It's not a lot of heavy lifting on, on your part. Uh, GMAT or GRE is a, an effective part of a complete application to the MBA program. So if you've got your official score, you can send that into your application advisor to uh, complement that. If you're planning to write the GMAT or GRE in the next 30 to 60 days, um, simply outline when your test date is with Terry Lynn and, and Rachel, and then they will note that in your file. Um, a GMAT or GRE is a part of our scholarship rubric. So um, it's if a scholarship is is something that's important to you, uh, I highly recommend uh, considering writing the GMAT as a part of your application process. A couple of years ago, we got rid of the essay and we've gone to a video question format. Um, as opposed to taking several hours or days to write an essay, this takes about 15 minutes of your time. Um, you sit in front of a, a webcam, much as I am doing right now. Uh, a video question will pop up on the screen. You have a couple of moments to consider your answer. Um, the light turns green. Your answer is recorded and sent directly to the admissions committee for review. Uh, there's no right or wrong answers and you can't study. Uh, there is also a timed written response as a part of that. Um, there are situational questions or um, general knowledge questions that you might have. Uh, perspective that you might have as a young professional or as a, an MBA applicant, and how do you feel about specific issues? Um, I just mentioned the GMAT. One of the questions might be, what are the pros and cons of a standardized test as a part of an MBA application process? Again, think about your answer and give an articulate response to that question within a timed format. Once you have all those items in hand, your file is moves forward to an interview. You are granted an interview either live here in Kingston or through the Zoom camera. Um, it's usually a two-on-one format with a member from the MBA staff as well as a member of the Career Advancement Center to assess your uh, post-MBA career prospects. Uh, it's about half hour to 45 minute process there. We block an hour's time for you. And uh, once that interview is in hand, your file is sent to the admissions committee for review and you're guaranteed an answer on that file within uh, that 10 day window. So we know we got to move fast uh, this time of year as you progress. So next steps, uh, go to the full-time MBA website, which I'll share with you in a moment, submit that resume and unofficial transcript for that preliminary assessment. You can continue to monitor our website and register for upcoming events. I do want to mention the third bullet point there. You can go to the Full-Time MBA website and drop down our student window and see uh, several, about 30 students there that are student ambassadors, their headshots, their profiles, and a button where you can press to ask them a question. That question goes directly to their inbox. And uh, I know that our students are our best ambassadors to tell you all about the MBA experience and how they maximize their experience here on campus. And again, continue to connect for, with us virtually through uh, phone, through Skype, Zoom, email. Uh, we're happy to maintain that relationship with you moving forward. So there's the website, smithqueens.com slash MBA. Uh, again, a rolling admissions basis. And there's our social media channels at the bottom of the slide if you'd like to follow us and, and gather more information. Um, I am going to stop sharing now and see if any questions have uh, popped into the chat. And please take a moment to um, ask me a question. If there's anything that wasn't answered during the official webinar today, I'd be happy to answer those questions. Um, a question here from a, a guest. 
I read that there is a TA ship, some type of funding for $26,000. Is that still the case? Um, I'm really not sure what you're getting at here, uh, guest, uh, to the webinar. So if you'd like to drop that in a specific question, uh, maybe a little bit more there, um, I'm not sure what you're referring to, to be honest. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to answer that. Um, if you have any questions about the program experience, the operation, the arc of the 12 months on campus, if you want to learn more about team-based learning, if you'd like to learn more about the Career Center, if you'd like to learn more about uh, industries that our specific students are, are undertaking, um, extracurricular activities that they undertake during the MBA, I'd be happy to answer any or all of those uh, questions by those that are on the webinar live. Oh, another question has just popped up. Thank you very much. Can you please elaborate on the new venture project and entrepreneurship during the Smith MBA? Great question. And thank you for, for asking the question. Um, in the second half of the year, a, a student will undertake what we call the individual project. And the new venture version is one of those projects that they can undertake. Um, this is for the entrepreneurs that are out there listening in. This is a creating a new venture plan. You don't have to physically take the business to market. Many do. But uh, building that plan as to what you would do if you were to take it to market is exactly uh, the process here. Um, perhaps you have a friend that is creating a new a venture that you'd like to assist them with. Um, this is a great way for you to collaborate with uh, someone near and dear to your heart to help create uh, a venture that could be successful with the, all of the different resources available to you here at Smith School of Business. You are assigned a advisor, uh, a successful entrepreneur in their own right, someone that has worked with entrepreneurial venture projects over the last decade or more. Um, they don't do the work for you, but they're a great resource for you to um, call upon as you move through the uh, latter part of the program year and building your career plan uh, for this, this venture that you're trying to build. And uh, it's the largest uh, academic undertaking that you will have during the MBA program, 4.5 academic units. So it's basically a course and a half that you undertake from the late spring into the early winter uh, annually. So thanks for that great question. And I look forward to seeing your entrepreneurial idea come forward. What if I don't have two years of work experience? Am I still encouraged to apply? Um, I would say uh, speak to your application advisor. However, um, work experience is critical because if you don't have relevant work experience, not only will you be struggling to contribute to the dialogue in the team room and in the classroom, you're also gonna be struggling to find appropriate work after the program because the marketplace is asking for relevant work experience as a part of a full-time MBA student model. So again, we are trying to set you up for success. And I would hate for you to move forward with um, an MBA experience with false assumptions that you come out the other side with an accreditation and are able to find the career that you're looking for in this competitive landscape uh, without having the proper uh, profile and tools to be able to do that. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. Um, so I would have that conversation with your application advisor uh, before making any rash decisions. Next question, thank you for asking. Um, should we participate in classes five days a week. Uh, that's correct, uh, especially in the first six months of the program. It says so right in the title, full-time MBA. So it, treat it very much like a full-time job. You'll be in class Monday to Friday from 8.30 to four. You will have a morning class and an afternoon class with an hour and a half for a break in between for lunch. Uh, you will be working on personal study, team deliverables and meetings, career search, extracurricular activity uh, on the evenings and weekends as well. Um, but it's very much uh, a full-time experience. There are days or part days where we call reflection, where you don't uh, attend class, where you'd be able to work on some of the deliverables that uh, are accumulating as you move through that. 
but it is an academically rigorous process and we want you to come in with that mindset from day one. Uh, great question. Uh, final question here. I might be able to get through a couple of quick ones as we wind down our time together. I saw on the website that I could specialize. Is there a set time during the program that specialized can happen? Can we specialize from the beginning? Uh, I'll answer the last question first. No, you can't specialize from the beginning. You will specialize in the late spring. You usually select your specialization in May or June every year because the specializations occur in the elective courses that you take in the second half of the year. Um, you will take uh, approximately four of the seven courses that you undertake in the second half of the year. You can specialize in areas like finance or consulting or entrepreneurship, marketing and sales, digital business or analytics. A uh, great way for you to uh, narrow that funnel slightly as to the type of academia that you want to undertake. I do understand that the GMAT score requirements are a minimum 600, but what GMAT score is considered competitive for selection? Um, yes, yeah, 600 is a, is a, is a floor score, so to speak. I mean, we, we've been with the program now for almost a decade. Um, we've year over year, we've seen scores in the 700 range. We've seen scores in the high five, low six range. The, the meaty part of the curve has been 650 or 660 the last several years. So if you're looking for a bullseye score, 650 would be a good uh, meaty part of the curve for you to take a look at. During your presentation and last answer, there seems to be a lot of coaches and advisors in the program. How are we assigned advisors, coaches, and are we matched somehow? Um, so your team coach is assigned to you when you join the program. Uh, all of our students are put on academic teams for the first six months. There are about six or seven students on every team, and we will match you up uh, coach to team that way. Uh, coaches through the Career Advancement Center are assigned through your preferred uh, post-MBA career destination, uh, the industry, the type of work that you'd be looking at. Uh, we have experts within that space and they're often lined up there. So I hope that uh, answers your question. I do want to wind down here because I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, my undergraduate degree was for three years. That is, I have done 15 years of formal education. Am I eligible for the course courses? Again, uh, to the guests that asked this question, I would have that direct question uh, with your application advisor. I'd rather not get into specifics of any one particular applicant's file at this point in this public format. Do you have a part-time or evening MBA program? Unfortunately, we do not. This is a full-time MBA journey from January to December boots on the ground, physically here at Goods Hall. Um, hello, Sir Jeff. Is it possible if we apply as a working student? Uh, similar to the previous answer, um, no, it's very, very difficult to work as a part of the full-time MBA model here at Smith. Um, I outlined you're gonna be in class a lot. You've been working on personal study, team deliverables, uh, as well as that post-MBA career plan. So working on the side is not something that is recommended. Um, could you please highlight the type of case studies you focus on during the studies? Just a general idea. Thanks for the previous response. Uh, again, I, I can't give a, 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 a general answer. The cases that are done through our coursework, our, our across a number of different industries, subjects, sources. Um, through They're written here at Smith. That we have uh, cases from other schools and other programs, um, from other industries. Um, it's very difficult to give a specific answer there. But again, I can, I can tell you, I can assure you that undertaking case-based study is something that you will get in abundance in the full-time MBA experience here at Smith. So thank you for the that late rally of questions here as we go through a very fast 40 minutes together. Uh, I appreciate all of those that tuned in live. Again, thank you for your interest in the full-time MBA experience at Smith School of Business at Queen's University. There's the website, smithqueens.com slash MBA. 
speak to Terry Lynn or Rachel and they can assist you with what comes next. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.